Hey guys, I was hoping to uh, capture one of these events, so you'll see that uh, the grid has gone down. So you'll see that it's recorded a grid outage, and you'll see that the at the bottom of the screen, it's telling you that there currently is a grid outage, and the power wall is providing backup power to your home. Your system will automatically reconnect to the grid once power returns to your neighborhood. And then it has a best practices. It takes you out to the Tesla website. It pretty much tells you just... I mean, I can, I'll slowly scroll through this. I could read the whole thing, and maybe I should. But overall, the best thing to do is just don't ch charge your car. You know, let your house run on whatever power you have and um, reduce the amount of power you're consuming. So turn off computers, anything else. That is... You know, if you don't have any idea when the power's coming back, if the power's coming back in an hour or something along those lines, then it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, you can see I'm charging my phone. The grid's down right now. The house is consuming 700 watts of power. 500 watts are coming off the solar, and the power walls are producing 200 watts, and currently they're at 83% of their total capacity. So something that I'll do that I wanted to demonstrate earlier is I will turn on the air conditioning. When I turn on the air conditioning, I just turn it to cool. So I'll turn it down to 72. All right, the air conditioning is now turned on. Looks like my solar array has actually gone down or gone offline. And so you'll see that the house is now consuming 3.6 kilowatts of power. And that's about what you know my house consumes about 700 watts with all the electronics kids watching tv the router playstation all that kind of stuff and then once i turn on the ac i consume you know 2.9 kilowatts of power for the ac to run um, something that's cool is up at the top of the screen you'll see you know for the grid outage it's telling oh it crashed it uh it's it, before it crashed it was telling us that, you know, there were about eight hours of power remaining, but that calculation is based on, you know, running the air conditioner and having the air conditioner running during that outage. Um, so you'll see, you know, it's saying that there's 8.2 kilowatts of power, or sorry, 8.2 hours of power remaining. And the power walls are at 83%. Something we could actually do is go in um, yeah, in here you can see kind of what the power's using. You'll see this morning, about 8 o'clock, I charged the car up. So you'll see it went up to 10 kilowatts of usage because that's what I charged the car at. Um, you'll see today's kind of been a kind of a sporadic cloudy day where the clouds have come in and out. But even with that, I produced, you know, 44.4 kilowatts of power. That power, um, where is the, oh, it's down, down at the bottom, you'll see right above download my data, 1.1 kilowatts of power were, went into the power walls, and the power walls have discharged 4.8 kilowatts of power, and my self-sufficient power, meaning if you look at the, if we click on that, the three bars up there, you'll see highlighted now, you can combine different data elements. So if you look at the house usage, the solar and the grid, you'll see that we were running off of grid power until 1 p.m. because that's where my peak power comes in. And then after that, you know, the power walls kicked in. Um, so the power walls normally just run from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. and it's, you know, 7.38. So normally they would shut off at 8 o'clock, but now that we're in a power outage, they're gonna go until, you know, the power comes back. Um, so the 59% self-powered is because this morning I was running off of grid power instead of running off of solar or the power walls. Um, yeah, it's still down. Oh, maybe it's back online. Yeah, it looks like it is. But we'll still, we'll continue to run off the power walls because, you know, we're still in the peak power time. Um, but you'll see that the 
you know, 8.2 hours of power remaining has gone away because that's just kind of giving you an indication of when the power is going to run out from the power walls and when you would lose power to your home. But my peak power is going to end in 21 minutes at 8 o'clock. And when it ends at 8 o'clock, then we'll start using grid power. And grid power will no longer consume, you know, power off the power wall. So it won't make that big of a difference anymore. So yeah, so that's turning on the air conditioning. So I can go and turn the air conditioning back off. So I'll turn it off and then you'll see that the home power usage will drop from 3.6 kilowatts down to 700 watts here in a second. And I could turn on the dryer. It's the same, pretty much the same visualization. The dryer will consume about 6.6 .6 kilowatts of power. The AC's, you know, 2.9, and then the background of the house is about 700 watts until I wander around the house and turn off all the devices that the kids have left on all over the house, which I figured out is kind of the number one role of fatherhood. Hey, they crashed again. I just have not had the Tesla app crash that much. I'll uh, have to check here in a second and see if there's a an update to the app. I did update to iOS 15.5 today, so this might just be a compatibility mode between the Tesla app and the current iOS version. But the uh, so you'll see, you know, it's still. Oh, yeah, I gotta go plug in. Um, you see, it's still using you know, 1.1 kilowatts, just be, after your AC finishes running the compressor, it, uh, it will actually wind down on the, or the fan will keep running so that it keeps air going across the coils and the air going across the coils, you know, needs to keep running so that that doesn't freeze up. So even after your condensers finished running, the fan will keep blowing air over that coil for a matter of time until those coils formed up. Oh, that's my... Because we lost power, there's a, a little blip to it, and now my radon detector's going off. Hey, it looks like my uh, solar's back online. I don't know what it does at night when it gets around four, four to 600 watts of power. That inverter, if I'm standing in my garage, I'll hear it just sitting there clicking on and off. It must, must get a little unstable at night, or maybe some clouds went over or something, I don't know. But yeah, you'll see that right now we're producing 400 watts, and the house is consuming 400 watts, so nothing's coming on or going off the grid, or off the uh, power walls. There is a an interesting new setting, though. So if we go into, this is with the newest version of the app, if we go into the power wall settings, you know, you can go in and determine how much power will you use for time-based control, how much power will you use for backup, meaning when there's a power outage. And I'm still running off of time-based control, which I showed on the previous video. But you'll notice down at the bottom, now there's these advanced options for charging off the grid. So you'll see down there, enabling this when you're allowed to, ch to grid charge. Powerwall will use the grid to charge your backup reserve and for daily use in time-based control. When disabled, Powerwall will charge only from the solar. And there it goes again. Um, so one thing, when I purchased my Powerwalls, you could apply for a alternative energy tax credit from the federal government, and a part of that agreement, and I'd have to go look it up. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But it was somewhere between, you know, 10, about 10% 10 of the power that went into those power walls could come from the grid. But the other 90% of it had to go into the power walls from alternative energy, such as solar panels or wind power, uh, hydroelectric, or, you know, something that wasn't supplied from the grid. And that was an agreement you made when you signed up for that tax credit. And so I've, you know, before you'd actually have to go into the administrator console for the power walls and change the configuration to allow it. But now they've 
you know, pushed an update to where you can toggle that on and off, and it must just be based on the honor system that you're, you know, if you applied for the tax credit for those power walls that you, you know, that you're obeying those those guidelines that they've set forth. Um, so mine, the power walls, you know, had them installed around the same time as the solar. So, you know, it was within the same year that we added solar panels and power walls. And so, you know, we applied for those against the tax credit, which was nice. It helped, you know, with the the ROI on on the power wall. Oh, there's another thing down to here too that, you know, my my home info Thought it would tell me the you know 8.16 kilowatt solar plant but it you know it doesn't say the size of the of the uh, solar so this is you know something interesting too is vehicle charging went off grid so you can go in and actually say you know if if the grid goes down how much of the power can i deliver from the power walls to the car and, you know, my opinion is, you know, none. <laughs> like, if I want... There it goes again. Holy cow. But if I want, you know, my house to stay stable, then I want that not to happen. But if I'm in, you know, one of the East Coast areas and I need to charge my car because I need to get out of Dodge, then that's a really nice setting to have that I can go in and say, you know, forget it. Like, you know, I'm going to take 90% of the power from the power walls, dump it into my car, and I'm going to get out of here. So it's a nice setting to have. In my reality, I don't think I would ever use it because I want all the power to go to the home and not charge my car that's going to sit in the garage. Um, so, yeah, so that's... Um, I think I talked about the lowdown on the, of the impact, right? Is The impact is how much power... Has your house consumed that either came off the solar or came off the power wall? Any power that comes off the grid lowers your self-powered. Even if you generate, you know, three times as much solar energy as your home has consumed. So for me today, I've cons I've uh, generated 44.5 kilowatts of power. If we go over to the home, our home has used 34.5 kilowatts of power. So truly, I generated more power off the solar than my home used. And, you know, in an excess of, you know, right at 10 kilowatts, that's kind of handy. But, you know, I generated 10 extra kilowatts of power that didn't go to my home, right? Most of that power went back out to the grid. I pushed 14 kilowatts to the grid that I will use, you know, later to charge the car, other things. But if you look at the impact... I'm only 59% or 49% self-powered because the 51% of the other power, if we look at the energy graph, we'll go over to combine, upper right hand by day. And then if we combine grid with home, uh, let's take solar off of there. But grid, I don't know, I like the old UI a lot better than this UI. Um, yeah, it's just not going to let me do it. But, okay, so we'll go back to the grid. So you see all the home usage is in blue. And then we will uncheck the home usage. I don't, you know, it feels like I'm unchecking. You can see I'm clicking that, that solar because it's going, you know, dim. But it's not toggling on or off. It's, yeah, you want to look at this. And it's like, no, it'd be really nice if I could toggle it off. But all that power from earlier today came from the grid. And that's why, even though I produced an excess, I wasn't self-powered this morning because I was running off of grid power. Um, yeah, there it goes again. Yeah, I, I'll have to make a third video since the uh, second video of the app just keeps crashing. So anyway, let me, uh, let me know if that was helpful. Hopefully, you know, you were able to see a grid outage live. You know, see the grid come back, everything kind of get restored back to normal. Along with a lot of app crashing. Um, 
Yeah, and I'll head out to the App Store and just see if there's a newer version. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions, if this is helpful. You know, if you feel like it, you know, please like and subscribe. That would be pretty amazing. And thank you so much for watching.